Journey to the Cross, Day 31 There is no defeat in the cross. Only triumph is to be found there. The life of Jesus was a death march. The life of Jesus was a victory parade. Both are true and must be held together. There was no defeat in the righteous life and sacrificial death of Jesus. The birth of Jesus was a victory. The escape from the hand of Herod was a victory. The humanity of Jesus was a victory. The perfect life of Jesus was a victory. The triumph over temptation was a victory. The public baptism was a victory. The teaching of Jesus was a victory. The healing ministry of Jesus was a victory. The arrest at Gethsemane was a victory. The trial and torture of Jesus was a victory. The crucifixion with criminals was a victory. The separation from his father was a victory. His death on a cross was a victory. His resurrection was a victory. His post-resurrection appearing to his followers was a victory. His ascension was a victory. Everything in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, even those things that appeared to be defeats, were victories. Each was a victory because each was done in fulfillment of God's plan. Each was a victory because it was done in fulfillment of prophecy. Christ did all these things as our substitute. He did them all on our behalf. He lived for us the life we could never have lived. He won for us battles that would have led to our defeat. He suffered for us so we would not suffer God's anger over sin. He conquered for us the final enemy, death. Yes, it was a life of suffering and death, but in it all was victory after victory. He came to conquer and conquer he did. He came to reverse the course of human history by victory after victory until he could say, it is finished. The Apostle Paul talks about the victorious life of Jesus in Colossians 2. Therefore, as you receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have been filled in him who is the head of all rule and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a circumcision made without hands, by putting off the body of the flesh, by the circumcision of Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God, who raised him from the dead. And you who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven all of our trespasses by cancelling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. Colossians 2, 6-15 Paul wants you to know that right here, right now, your life is rooted in the victories of Christ on your behalf. He wants you to know that when you are built up and grow, it is because of the victories of Christ on your behalf. He wants this identity to be the motivation behind everything you do. The Son of God left his lofty place and came to earth to suffer and die victoriously so that you would have not only a brand new identity but also brand new potential. If you are God's child, you are more than a husband, wife, son, daughter, father, mother, neighbor, friend, male, female, young person, older person, worker, retired, and so on. You are a child of the conquering king. You are a son or a daughter of a victorious savior. You have been raised and made alive. You have been forgiven, that is, your record of debt has been cancelled. Your penalty was nailed to the cross once for all. This is who you are. This is how you are now welcome to live, all because of the victory of Jesus on your behalf. You don't have to live in timidity and fear. You don't have to give way to temptation. You don't have to surrender your desires to the things of this world. You don't have to chase after idols. You don't have to fear God's rejection when you have failed. You don't have to fear being honest about your sin, weakness, and failure. You don't have to look for identity where it can't be found. You can say no to the enemy. You don't have to fake righteousness you don't really have. You don't have to let anxiety rule your heart. 
You can rest in the unshakable love and forgiveness that is yours because of the victory of Jesus on your behalf. I leave you with Paul's crescendo sentence. He disarmed the ruler's authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. Colossians 2.15 On the cross, Jesus was robbing the enemy of its weapons. As Jesus was on the cross, the enemy was being put to shame. The cross was a triumph, sin defeated, forgiveness granted, acceptance with God assured, eternal life guaranteed, victory now and in the world to come. This is your identity. Now go live it out.